IIT Madras has ranked number one yet again for the fourth consecutive time in the overall category and for the seventh consecutive time under the engineering category. With me, Professor Kama Kodi, the IIT Madras director. Professor, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations. And what does this achievement imply? This achievement implies that uh, we have been working hard. That's the first implication. And especially uh, during the very, very uh, you know, challenging time of the COVID. Um, I dedicate this first to all the frontline workers who kept the institute ticking. Um, because, you know, as you know, NARF is a very, very broad based evaluation. Just not academics, just not research, it's about patents, it's about outreach, so many things. And uh, that requires a very collective effort. So, this essentially implies that we are very cohesive and doing it, uh, you know, focused on a single, uh, we have a very good focus. We are moving in the right direction. Nice. And when it comes to QS World Rankings, yes. uh, still IIT Madras ranks at 250th position. Uh, IIT Bombay is much better than you, 172nd rank. Uh, where do you lag and what's being done to bridge this? So one of the uh, biggest points for all, all our uh, institutions in India is the perception. Uh, and uh, the perception basically comes from multiple angles. Right. Uh, and uh, we have been consistently working on the perception part and uh, what I personally believe and what my predecessors also Professor Bhaskar, Professor Anand also believe that we need to actually start demonstrating things to the world. Some of the interesting things that came up this year is the 5G, right? So as a multi, it's not just IIT Madras, seven institutions right. in the IIT. So we have demonstrated that we are doing something which is of very great value and we also found a place in the international uh, um, standards. Right. So we aspire to do many more things in the in this direction and I'm sure that's how we can build up the perception. So that is one very important point. And the other thing is our internationalization. The NEP has basically very clearly uh, uh, given some guidelines on how right. we are going to go about with internationalization. So we have started uh, 10 uh, interdisciplinary MTEC programs uh, and we are tying up with uh, multiple countries to right. come here. One such uh, MOU was signed on May 16th uh, in the presence of Mount Olympia. Uh, uh, between IIT Madras and Kathmandu University on energy systems, MTech in energy systems. It's a joint degree program. And we will be opening up many such joint degree right. programs. And uh, the campus will also see, uh, thanks to the receding pandemic, and hopefully we'll also see much more international presence. Right. I think these two are very important. And once we settle that, I think we can start competing in a very different direction. Is tech focus going to continue? What are the emerging areas for which IIT Madras is now preparing itself? Yeah. Absolutely, tech focus is going to continue. We are uh, we are now an institute of eminence, and the way uh, the funding of the institute of eminence is channelized at IIT Madras, we have identified around 68 projects of uh, uh, real tech focus, and that the phase one it has been an explorative phase. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have got excellent results at this point, and we now see more convergence of many disciplines. So the tech focus today, Sam, is going to be about interdisciplinary education. Right, right. And more that we bring people from dis different disciplines together, I think that's where we grow. And uh, we have already uh, in that place. And I believe that within the next five years, we'll have something like 10 very important areas where, you know, we'll be world class. And that is right. what we have believed. In addition, we are also uh, very shortly looking at opening up a medical science and technology department where technology and science comes together. Worldwide, 37% uh, uh, of Nobel laureates in the world are these physician scientists right. who have understood technology and medicine. God uh, bless, in 10 years, that would be, uh, my dream is a Nobel laureate from IIT Madras. Does it mean you may have a medical college here? Uh, it essentially means that we will have a medical science department here and we will have affiliated hospitals here. That's the model that we are looking at. So we will have uh, uh, affiliated hospitals who will basically be working together with us. Right. Many of these high-ranking institutes this time, Professor, are from South India. Uh, how do you read this? Uh, I, I immediately can't respond, but I think we are doing well here. And uh, we are uh, our outreach has been quite nice. Uh, I'm very happy to see many, many colleges coming up, uh, both from Chennai and also Coimbatore and many other places. Uh, we have also started fine-tuning ourselves to the ranking mechanism. I think ranking is very important for the country, right? We, uh, so, as the uh, uh, 
Honorable Minister of Education mentioned in his uh, talk that if I admit as a parent, if I admit a kid in a school, I should know where it is, right, where, which rank it is. I think that is one aspect. And I think we are also fine-tuning towards that rank. And that is giving us very, very clear focus on how we develop. I think that is what is happening. And maybe South is uh, getting aligned to the ranking much faster. Right, right, right. right. What would this number one ranking for IIT Madras mean to a student? It means quite a bit to the students. First, they will be very proud that we are in the number one institution in the country. The second thing is, uh, now this also gives us a, a way by, you ask me, right, where do you lag? I know where I lag. When we are at, say, uh, so there are many parameters that are evaluated at 100. Right? Suppose you are at 40 or 50 out of 100, then you get a macro picture, right? So, okay, improve on this area. And um, it's only improve, right? I don't know what to improve, how to improve. That we left to our exploration and imagination. But the moment you come to this 80, 90s, where we are currently, I know exactly which points we need to improve. So, you get a micro picture of this. And that, in essence, means that the institute, over a period of time, we are going to improve every parameter. So, there are some um, close to 70, 80 data points. And every data point, we are going to have a careful look now. Because if we want to get... 90 to 92 is different from 40 to 50, as you by understanding data, right? So that is going to basically uh, give a very positive impact in the institute. And I think that is where the students are going to really benefit out of it. Okay. Many mm -hmm. alumni from IITs, yes. including IIT Madras, have yeah. reached global leadership positions, including Sundar Pichai. But when it comes to startups from IITs, yes. they don't really have, we don't really have any globally disrupting startups. Why? Uh, we have now, uh, in the sense that uh, we have now 260 startups uh, that are there. And uh, we have an evaluation of around 30,000 crores. Uh, this, this, is, this transformation cannot happen overnight. But I strongly believe in the next three to four years, we will certainly have at least five startups which will become unicorns. Mm -hmm. And we are in that direction. As I mentioned in my convocation address, we have Agnikul, uh, we have Galaxi, we have uh, now we have a very interesting startup which is doing the Hyperloop. And I think these are going to really, really become unicorns. And uh, we are very confident that in another five years' time, uh, you, you will ask the reverse question. Right. <laughs> and this uh, number one ranking, how has it impacted recruitment, placements, and the salary structure for your students? Yeah, we have been consistently improving on the placement. Right. As you see, our uh, median salary has been consistently increasing at the rate of around, uh, say, uh, 10 to 15 percent every year. And we we'll continue to have this rate. And um, with the introduction, see, our curriculum also has become very quite robust now. Uh, we are now concentrating on what you again call as, you know, the multidisciplinary approach. Uh, today, Sam, um, if I say I am a computer science engineer, right, that shouldn't mean anything. Right. I am a systems engineer. I am an engineer. I have to understand many, many aspects of engineering. And that is what our curriculum has now come up. So, if we, two years they can study their core engineering. After the third year, they can now branch off into a very dis different discipline in which they apply the core engineering. And this is going to have a very, very significant impact on our job profile. Give us a sense of the range of salary. See, uh, we had uh, uh, surely one person has uh, crossed a crore per year this time. So our salary uh, median today is around 15 or 16 max median salary. Right. I am sure in the next few years we will test 20 to 25 lakhs. Right. Also, Professor, when it comes to admission to IITs, yes. still people will have to spend a lot, start preparing early for coaching, mm -hmm. private coaching, and the perception is only the affluent sections largely make make it. Do you think that's unfair? No. No, we have given a very very nice route now. Uh, we have this data science program where it is only a qualifying examination. It's not an entrance examination. We have around 12,000 students so far. And please note that this is going to be the most engaging field today, the most job-oriented field today. And we have already 12,000 students. We are actually going to the, uh, thanks to the government of Tamil Nadu, we are going to the rural schools today. We are training the candidates to write that qualifying examination. We have multiple programs on it. And I'm sure that accessibility is going to really bring IIT Madras as an institution for all. For your flagship programs, can't you admit students on the basis of their marks and class 12 exams? Uh, it will be uh, for the flagship program, data science itself is a flagship program. Right? 
no, for a B, B tech. Uh, B tech again, it has to come through a JE process because we do have a limitation on the number of seats that we can occupy physically on the car. And when, when we have a limitation or a cap on the number of seats, we need to go through a process, right? And a fair process. And uh, an entrance exam seems to be the only fair process. And so if you want to come out of that process, that means I should not have a cap on the number of seats. Mm -hmm. And this data science offers it. And what we are happy about is, as a big ass type of placement that a BTEC student will get, the same data science student also will get. And now we have made it as a four-year BS program. Mm. Now, then after that, there is a gate in data science now. So they can come for an MTech. But then jobs are very much open. So we have 500,000 jobs that are needed, 500,000 data scientists that are needed in the country. And in multiple disciplines. Does the high expense involved in preparing for JEE uh, exclude smart children who could, be, who could not afford? No, no, but actually there are now many, many modes of preparation and it's not just the plain people who are coming. If you actually see, there are many, many people who have, uh, you know, when we go for our scholarship programs, we find that people who have a family income of less than one lakh are actually joining the program. And we have also made uh, 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 several modules that are available uh, that basically the, uh, the, the, the students can use for preparation for the And so it is not no more an affluent uh, thing. But the only point is that accessibility to these materials, I think that through the uh, pro pro proliferation of internet in a bigger way uh, to the villagers, etc. I think this will be a matter of time where people are coming. But it's not now just an affluent uh, people entering because we do see significant amount of less than 1 lakh, less than 5 lakh per annum people entering. Into this. And uh, since children start preparing for entrance quite early, as early as class 8, class 9. Do you think in course of time, class 12 examination or even school education will turn irrelevant? People start preparing only for entrance tests. Actually, no. Because, you know, if you look at the syllabus, it is perfectly aligned with the plus 2 syllabus. And it's sort of sigma of multiple boards of the country. So, by preparing for this, they actually get a very good grounding in science. Right? For example, I prepared very well for mathematics, for JE in 1984. Okay, I didn't clear chemistry, so I didn't get into J in the IIT BTEC program. Nothing happened because of that. See, you know, we have a, still we have a very good career and I could become a director of the society. Right, so, but the point here is, my grounding in mathematics has been very strong. I turned out to be good uh, computer scientist, at least reasonably good mathematician. Yes, I owe this to a JE preparation that I did at that point of time. So, uh, so the, nothing happens here. Uh, you are actually preparing for an entrance exam is uh, one aspect of it. If you get it, fine. If you don't get it, the amount of knowledge that you have basically got by studying for JE, that rigor of JE, makes you a very good scientist. Right? It gives you a very good grip. So you should look at it from a knowledge perspective. This examination, at least, you know, aspired by uh, 1.5 million, but all these people actually read very good science. They prepare themselves for the, the criticism is that these children who crack JE also go through a kind of a rote learning through coaching centers and they may not be good in critical thinking in that sense or applying what they've learned. Uh, so that may be uh, argued because now as you see, uh, as we see the number of alumni who have gone out, the type of uh, uh, things that they have done, they, they need critical thinking. <laughs> so this is a sort of uh, thing. And it's not actually rote learning, but of course, uh, the the centers actually teaches you see je is a speed and uh, time okay you have to be accurate and you have to be fast fast and accuracy are very you know two different orthogonal things right so so that is where uh, you know the centers do give some techniques to manage speed and time and which type of question to select uh, actually there is some lot of critical thinking the student has to do in that three hours right? this is my view but the uh, type of alumni that are there and now the type of students who have come, it's not just routine. I think they have a lot of critical thinking ability. Also, Professor, when it comes to social justice, fulfilling your commitment towards social justice, yes. the perception is that IIT Midras deliberately leaves openings for SC, ST faculty members open. Ultimately, these openings go in favor of upper caste community. No, caste. it's not happening here. We have a per perfect roster here and the roster is filled according to the uh, you know, um, there is a government roster on consideration. 
and we are following but still there are many vacancies unfilled for a long time we have been filling now we have a mission mode that has completed and now another mission mode that has been announced and we are very committed and will be filled. what's what's the challenge in this uh, in this absolutely no challenge we are now having this mission mode and the mission mode is an answer to the challenge is it a kind of a, under a time frame? Uh, yeah, we are doing it on a regular basis now. So every year we will have a mission mode and fill up the vacancies. Right. Lastly, earlier we have seen a few deaths by suicide by students reportedly under pressure. Uh, is that something being done to ease the pressure or to address this particular challenge? So one of the things is we have uh, we are now strengthening all our interactions with the students. We have Sati, we have this, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> wellness centers. Right. And we have... Uh, we have now very, we are also trying to get what you call as mentors for the students, buddies, right? So, see, there can be between a faculty and a student, there'll be an age gap. And so, so we'll get somebody intermediately who can be, you know, uh, interacting with them. And we are making consistent effort to see that the student wellness is also maintained. Uh, and very importantly, there is a role for the parents. That's also, I want to tell here, parents do, should not put any sort of pressure on the kids, right? Because several all toppers come and meet here and so somebody from that tops so it doesn't matter if the student is a little bit lagging or you know it's often success and failure is you know part of life right so so that is one and the second thing is any family pressure should not come here right so they should see to it that the student is actually going uh, through a very very tough curriculum and it's very important if you want to become big in life you need to undergo a tough curriculum. Right. See, toughness right. Right makes you a gold that comes because of you know <laughs> that uh, strengthening so um, when that type of uh, thing is happening it's very important that the parents also cooperate right? they should not bring in their family tensions on the mm -hmm. kids These are... and a few fa faculty members have expressed what they call the caste discrimination uh, is that being addressed or proven to there is absolutely no caste discrimination and uh, we have been addressing it any caste discrimination issue we are addressing it immediately we have committees that are now formed who will be immediately notified. But that found to be true in any of these uh, investigations? But they found to be true? Uh, no, none, 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 none in the recent past. Right, after right, after. Right. Thank you, Professor, for your time. That was Professor Kamakoti, the IIT Madras director, talking to us as the Institute ranks number one in national ranking states again in Chennai with Suresh, Sam Daniel, Findy TV.